For days, nothing has happened. The brave turn remains moored in the harbor. Lee Kello is fed up. He wants to get working. That's why he went into the offshore industry. I've done maybe 16 years operating cranes and then I got bored of sitting in one place too long and, and just fancied a change, so I come into lifting supervisor and a lot of rigging work and stuff like that. But the weather's not cooperating, it's too windy. We've been waiting now for, uh, must be four days, three, four days in total. Just about three, four days. We yeah. arrived at this harbour yesterday, but uh, we were arriving at the last harbour, waiting there for two or three days as well, so, but uh, the weather doesn't look good for the next few days, so we're just trying to keep ourselves occupied. The rotor, with its blade spanning more than 100 meters, has to be loaded on board, but it's extremely sensitive to wind. Loading will have to wait yet another day. We'll take the, the machine down both, both sides of each blade and uh, we'll come down the sides of the blade just inspecting for damage, any big scratches, any paint damage uh, that could have been done during installation. Yeah. So we'll just take an extra care this time. The Brave Turn is a jack-up installation vessel built especially to help construct offshore wind turbines. Every day, the ship and its crew cost 150,000 euros, even when they're sitting idle. For a year now, Pyotr Pikutovsky's workplace has been on the Brave Turn's bridge. He's the ship's second mate. Our second mate is the position of the person who is responsible for all navigation equipment or radio equipment. And he has to keep an eye on the wind speed. Until Monday, uh, no chance. The, the weather limit is above the limit. Uh, we have got the limit six and uh, eight meters per second for boat rotors. So uh, unfortunately, we have to wait for the better weather. The offshore wind power business requires a boatload of patience. While the ship's crew tends to some maintenance, the constructors have an enforced break. Even when they're not working, they receive full pay. But just sitting around is draining nonetheless. All you can do is think about your family back home and your girlfriend and all your friends going out and socializing and stuff and, and you're sat here doing nothing. So. Finally, the weather changes. The wind has died down. It's time to get going. Lee Kello and his installation crew are supposed to maneuver two complete wind turbines onto the ship and secure them. Loading just one component has already taken two hours. At six in the evening, the night shift takes over. The work continues non-stop. Twenty hours later, Kello has the last part loaded on board. The workers are from Britain, Ireland, Denmark and Germany. They've been working together since last December. Waiting's finished. Um, the guys are going now to ready to lift the gangway. Um, they land the gangway back on the quayside. The dockers will release it for us and then we'll start floating. On the bridge, everyone is highly focused. Pikutovsky wears his official uniform. His boss, the captain, steers the ship out of the port. 170 meters long, 100 meters wide, 660 deep, 61 people on board into the raging North Sea. Pikutovsky has studied navigation. He wants to become a captain himself. All is dependent from, uh, from, the, from the captain, especially because he's like, uh, you know, the main person who can say that you are ready for the next promotion or not and from from yourself if you feel that you have enough experience and you feel that can you can uh, go higher then that's the best time
After a week, the Brave Turn is finally out in the open sea. Speed is 11 knots. Destination 180 kilometers away. In the middle of the night, they're close to their goal. One hour notice to the construction field and you'd like to proceed to location 05. The job at the wind park begins. We'll have more in the next episode.